Welcome, Mrs. Lanko, everybody. Uh, thank you guys very much for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, sorry for how unprofessional this will probably end up seeming. No, you guys have I, been trust me, we've seen it all. This is yeah. like, this is this is up there with with the good. Like, <laughs> this isn't going to be like Bobby Bones. This is going to be like real. Pro rig. Why did we do this kind of thing? <laughs> no nonsense. We uh, hey, you give us microphones, we're good to go. Yeah, nice. Um, so first of all, congratulations on everything. Yeah, thank you. Um, if you could do me a really big favor, um, I. Uh, you guys are all probably good friends. You have good friends from home and stuff like that. And uh, I've got a friend who likes to inundate me with like lots of peer pressure. So if I don't, he's the one that showed me. I think Lanko. that's called college. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, he showed me Lanco for the first time, and uh, he'll see this, and then he. So he's like a great friend. Obviously. A great friend. A great friend. He has great taste, is what you're saying. Absolutely. Like, he heard Greatest Love Story and was like, Jordan, like you got to hear the song. I said, oh, that's great. That's fantastic. And he's like, yeah. He's like, don't forget who showed this to you. <laughs> and so fast forward like a year or so, and like here I am, and I get the chance to talk to you guys. And so I was wondering if you could look in the camera and just say like, hi, Vinny. Vinny. What's up, Vinny? It's Lanko here. Thanks for uh, helping us out and making another fan out there in the world. He, uh, that's going to save me from a lot of like in crowd, like, horrible like you know this guy doesn't even like he's too big now he went to college and now he doesn't care is about he his friends tonight? no he's not here oh my gosh he's, Vinny, uh, what's going on with that uh, he probably has a restraining order from the venue no i'm kidding he just <laughs> lives far away um anyways hallelujah nights has been out year um incredible story to work up to it kind of seemed like it was about a three-year uh build up from you know meeting writing and, and everything and you're now you have a hot country number one Country Airplay number one, the album debuted at number one, and recently ACM New Group of the Year. Yeah. Oh man, I'm blushing after like the laundry list of yeah. all that. <laughs> so you guys have been on the road, which feels like for a while. When was the last time you guys got an opportunity to sit back and like really realize what you've accomplished? Does that happen for you? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's weird. It's a, I feel like one day I'll be like in a rocking chair, an old man, and it'll just hit me like, Whoa, that all happened. Um, but right now, I don't know. It's been such a wild ride. I think it happened. I don't know. The, 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 all the accolades, all that stuff, all that really means is that you're making fans. And so I think that it, it really hits you the most. There are just moments when you're playing a show. And it happened. I mean, even on this tour, you're in a sold-out arena. And you take a step back. You're like, this is an arena full of people singing along with us. This is just wild. But I've, for me, you know, it's not – I don't really like – we don't have a piece of paper like that either that like reminds us that we're doing cool things. So it's more just like you have to take you have to take it all in. It you it hits you when you're playing a show. Yeah. I have well, found that I do think like there'll be times where you're at home for a week or so and you'll be sitting there because when you're in the in the middle of it, it's just go go go. You're not really thinking about it, and then you'll be sitting there just like watching Netflix or something. And you'll think, oh my gosh, <laughs> what just happened? How is this happening? Do you guys have like that? Have you had the uh, the grocery store situation where you're just kind of like Fruit Loops, uh, Lucky Charms? That's my song. <laughs> Is that happening? Yeah. yeah, it happened on the way up up here to Canada. We were all we all stopped for some food. We had a long drive up here, obviously, and we were all standing in line to order. And all of a sudden, I just hear this like really familiar guitar hook, and I'm like, "That's Eric playing." And it was uh, it was Born to Love. You know, I was like, "Guys, they're playing our song here." And just ordering Zaxby's. I went on a big hiking road trip last year through the desert. Like, it was way out in, like, southern Utah, this place called Monument Valley, which if you've ever been there, it's, like, hours from anything, and it's on, like, a Native American uh, reservation. It's Navajo Nation. And so it's really small, like, super small grocery stores, like, just really tiny community. And we are in there after dark, after the park closed, just getting some, like, groceries to eat. There's like no one in there and then all of a sudden like Born to Love You's on the radio in the Navajo Nation. <laughs> <laughs> the wild. the one I uh, you were gonna say something? Yeah, we didn't get free Zaxby's either. <laughs> oh no. So next time. The one that I thought was funny is I took my first vacation to Hawaii and uh, I was on a beer run. I was like my wife and I just had a couple's vacation and we're on a beer run and uh, the radio stations in Hawaii are wild because you'll have like a variety radio station. And you guys got crammed in between uh, uh, Bubble Toes by Jack Johnson. <laughs> and then it was Greatest Love Story. And then it was, I, like I shit you not, Sean Paul was right after. 
<laughs> and, I, and I thought like, what what station? I'm like, there's no way this is a preset. Like a millennial station. Yeah. I'd, li- yeah, I'd like to hear a Sean Paul Lanco remix. That uh, <laughs> yeah. that'd be interesting. Um, yeah, speaking of that song, I mean, I, you probably guys are are tired to death of maybe talking about it, but you, it's something you're definitely probably still proud of. Um, people sometimes get tired of playing their hits. Are you guys are you guys tired of that one yet, or because you guys played on every show, yeah. Ella and everything? Yeah, no, not at all. I um. I think that he, I don't know, you know, when you play it live, you're not alone. You know, there's yeah. people out there and you see the people's faces light up. I remember years ago, I went with my now wife at the time, girlfriend. We went to a festival in Tennessee called Bonnaroo. Oh, yeah. And uh, Tom Petty was playing. And you never know with older acts like that what hits they're going to play. But he played American Girl. He played Free Fall. He played, you know, just all those songs. And I remember being so thankful because he was giving me, I know that for decades people have been hearing those yeah. songs. He's been playing them. But I remember being like, I'm having this moment and sharing this moment now with so many people in history that have had this moment with this song. And I think that you kind of realize that when you're on stage, same thing. When you start playing certain songs, you look out in the crowd and you see people, you know, tap each other and they start freaking out. Yeah. Um, it just reminds you really why you're doing this whole thing. And so it's, I, we start getting tired of that. We're in trouble. <laughs> That's the, he did a bunch of Wilbury stuff at that show, didn't he? He did the yeah, end of the oh line yeah. and handle with care and oh stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. He did. He, it was cool. Cause he mixed in like his obviously, you know, like huge, like stereotypical yeah. songs that you'd expect. But then yeah, he did, he did. I mean, he played for like two and a half, half hours. hours yeah. so it was crazy. The, the, the beauty thing with the internet is like, I've been to Bonnaroo once and it was, uh, it was the Kanye year. We came on like five hours too late, uh, and uh, they still have a chance. You know? I don't know. I think it's got. I'm gonna say 08 or 09, and uh, to this day, there's still a chant at Bonnaroo that involves Kanye because people started saying a bad word and then Kanye because they were so mad. And to this day, like the same people go Bonnaroo. People also go. Kanye, oh. like it's just the thing people say at Bonnaroo because people are still pissed about it. Well, he he blamed it on Pearl Jam for being on there for two hours late, but on all the posters, like he they had a three hour set, and so uh, it was he made up for it. Man, that show was incredible. I remember being blown away, and and uh, then um, Leave on Helm brought out a bunch of people that same year, that's and cool. it, it was that's a wow, that's a great festival. Um, speaking, of, going back to the record here, I know you guys have basically a record in the tank it sounds like you guys are, are raring to go on the second one like just, that's why i asked you the question about reflection because you guys it sounds like you're gearing up for like round two pretty soon yeah i mean we're definitely working on it i mean i you know you put um when you put out your first record uh, there's like this relief you're like all right we did it and then you quickly realize like wait we got more to go and then and at first that's weird but then it gets exciting so you're like you know what there's some things that we didn't say on the first record that we want to say or some things that we've gone through even since the records come out that you want to say and you realize, oh, wait, we get another chance to make yeah. music and put our message out there. And um, yeah, we're working on it now. I mean, we've been we've been in and out of the studio over the past year and have a bunch of songs we're proud out proud of. Uh, just want to put one out uh, not too not too far, like a week ago. I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, we recently put out a new song from the project we're working on yeah. now. And so, uh, yeah, man, we've got we've got stuff gearing up to go. So Rival is like the to me, that's a. Uh uh, back of the arena like that one reaches all the way to the back where you look at like, one of the first singles was more you could sing that one in a coffee shop yeah. you won't be it doesn't sound like you'd be doing rival at the bluebird you know what i mean like that's a that's a reach to the back of the audience type was that kind of a was that a conscious decision like we're gonna i, I hate to use the, the term like go bigger but was it a conscious decision to go like okay we we own this theater but we want to get to the back <laughs> of the arena with this yeah that's a that's an interesting way to put it it's also interesting because we uh well, I mean, we, we first started playing this song in on this tour on, in arenas, and we were seeing how people were responding to it, and we were like, oh, this is this would be a cool song to have in our in our catalog. But, I mean, there's also an aspect of, you know, our first record, um, Greatest Love Story, you know, yeah, it's a song that you'd hear in a coffee shop. It's yeah. kind of chill. But that first record has a lot of energy to it, and our show has a lot of energy to it. I mean, you know, like, I literally crowd surf in a lot of our shows, and we're jumping off. On your belly, though. You don't, you don't do the back jump. I don't, I don't get that. I, I do. This, I've never done the belly jump. I would be scared to death to jump face first because people are handsy. I feel like you'd get um, poked in the eye or yeah. something. You know? Yes, the, my eye is what I I'm was, worried about. I was, ex- I was thinking eye. Yeah. 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 My worries, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, no, I, I definitely think that, you know, we just – coming out with the second record, there's a lot of energy on it, and I think that we wanted something that would – kind of showcase that and, and kick down the door uh, early on. You know, the, 
Yeah, no problem. Sorry, I'll get right through it. Um, are you any plans to work with or collaborate with Ross and uh, or Josh on the on tunes for this next record? Ross or Josh? Like oh, uh, songwriters. Yeah, yeah, oh, Josh Osborne and, and Ross. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. sorry, honestly, we've there's so many people involved I in like the imagine, record yeah. making process, and there's like three Joshes. Um, yeah, I mean, I've actually already written with uh, with Josh a few songs. We um, and and Ross as well. We actually are working on a song today in Soundcheck that uh, Josh helped write, and so. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we're all writing on the bus and then go back to Nashville and writing with uh, some songwriter buddies of ours. And so, um, yeah, that's definitely it's definitely a possibility. That's killer. Cool. Listen, thank you guys so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Canada loves you. Uh, can't wait for the new record. And uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, guys. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Cha-ching.